Christian singer Matt Redman reveals the truth about what happened with Mike Pilavachi. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Rev Dan. I'm a vicar in the Church of England. On this channel, you'll get my views as a parish priest on all the Christian news happening in the world today. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, comment, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So in a video on Matt Redvern's YouTube channel called Let There Be Light, he talked about his time when he was serving with Mike Pilavachi and what happened. Also, his wife, Beth, talks about her experiences as well. I recommend that you watch it. The link is down below. And just a warning, if you are a victim of abuse, please be careful as you watch this. If you are a victim also of abuse and haven't disclosed it to anybody, please do reach out to the appropriate people and authorities. So I'm going to be using the article from The Telegraph, which came out today with the a headline Christian singer Matt Redman reveals details of soul survivors Mike Pilavachi abuse for the first time. The British Christian music star finally speaks out about the abuse he suffered at the hands of the disgraced preacher. So the article starts off from a, a quote by Matt Redman, which is mainly taken from his video for this article, where he said, Looking back on it, I don't feel great about that. I didn't feel good at the time. I didn't really like physical touch that much because of what happened to me. And we'll get into what happened to him in the, the article. Matt Redman, the double Grammy award winning Christian music superstar, speaks slowly and calmly as he finally reveals the truth about his relationship with former mentor Reverend Canon Mike Pilavachi. This is the man whom he has appeared side by side on stages around the world in front of tens of thousands of adoring fans, with whom he founded the landmark Soul Survivor movement and festivals known as the Christian Glastonbury, and who he has known since he was just 13 years old. But of actually the captivating magnetic preacher was revered for, as the UK's most successful and charismatic evangelical leader until last year when the Telegraph unmasked him as an abuser. And for these articles, you can click the links down below as well. The investigation, which has been unravelling since April 2023, revealed how the 66-year-old former vicar, who was renowned for his direct dial to God, and who travelled around the world giving sermons, speaking in tongues, and converting thousands of people to the faith, all the while wearing his trademark colourful tie-dyed kaftans, became a cult-like church figure who was secretly spiritually and emotionally abusing victims for decades. So as I said in a previous video, I only saw Mike Pilavachi preach once and that was at a new wine conference down in Shepton Mallet which was you know what I saw as a, a comedy act for quite a long time with then a message quickly pinned on at the end but I was aware of Mike Pilavachi who was um, you know as it says here I wouldn't say that he was the most uh, successful UK successful and charismatic evangelical leader but he was very well known, went all the way around the world. And Soul Survivor was really well known. He was very successful in what he, he did. Um, but behind that, behind this success and, and all this preaching, all, all the festivals he attended and conferences he spoke at and, and setting up Soul Survivor, there was this backstory. And it's incredibly uh, sad and traumatic, especially for the victims of what was truly happening behind the scenes. His victim spoke out for the first time, telling how he preyed on a conveyor belt of young, vulnerable men, and how in the 1990s, when he began taking his mission work abroad, he left a trail of broken young male adults scattered around the world. They claimed that Pilavachi, who was avowedly celibate, repeatedly telling crowds that he had never slept with anyone, animal, vegetable or mineral, and that I'm okay, subjected them to toxic predatory behaviours, included psychological manipulation, bullying and horrible cruelty, and became obsessed with certain young men nicknamed Philly Boys, Mike's Boys or Mike's Favourites within the upper echelons of soul survivor circles. They also told how they were encouraged to receive full body oil massages in their underwear while being straddled by Pilavachi in his home and to engage in rigorous wrestling matches that could last as long as 20 minutes at a time, sometimes in church. One said, I think it's safe to say that the massages went too far up the inner thigh. He was an idol of mine. Who was I to question him? I was like putty in his hands, really. You know, and there's huge questions about safeguarding here. And yes, safeguarding has got better over the years and more awareness. But 
again said before in previous videos this comes back down to celebrity culture and as these young interns were saying and these young men you know Mike Pilevacci was so famous so well known and he would bring them in and give them the opportunities to speak and they were interns and you know they see this as a, a great opportunity to go serve God uh, and a great platform who wouldn't see it as a great platform when you're going to Soul Survivor it's so well known and you think this is this is great and then this is happening. It's an abuse of power. And this is what is being said a lot online. Absolute abuse of power. And creating these celebrity pastors, uh, you know, with so much power. We, we've seen it as well with Ravi Zacharias and with the abuse that happened with him. Many victims were first accounted him via the Gap Year program, Soul Time, now known as Soul 61, which trained young adults at Soul Survivor Watford, the church he founded in Hertfordshire. Now, in a watershed moment and in a world exclusive shared with The Telegraph, Redmond 50, who is arguably the best known and most influential and successful UK worship leader of his generation, has decided to speak out and reveals details of the suffering he endured as Pelavacci's most high profile victim, as well as his hopes for a reformed Church of England in the wake of the sole survivor scandal. And just to intercede here, um, the statement has been put out by Tim and Pete Hughes, which talks about the in the light of Matt and Beth Redmond's bravery in releasing their documentary. They uh, both said that they, on the 11th of November 2022, received an email from the National Church Safeguarding Team of the Church of England regarding concerns raised at Soul Survivor. They say this journey has been extremely painful for those of us who have been deeply connected to Soul Survivor. They go on to say, much like others, we also both experienced what we now know to be psychological and spiritual abuse at the hands of Mike Pedavacci. Whilst under his leadership, we also experienced the wrestling and massages that have been well documented. These events have caused years of pain and confusion. We've both been on journeys of healing from the abuse we experienced through counselling, prayer ministry and process of acknowledging the abuse and choosing to forgive. In 2004, we confronted Mike regarding his damaging behaviour and then subsequently brought it to the attention of the chairman of the Soul Survivor Ministries trustees. Our desire was to protect others who may have been impacted by this behaviour and to fight for the spiritual health and vitality of the ministry. Unfortunately, the process was not received well and our concerns were not taken seriously, leading to breakdowns in relationship and eventually to both of us leaving Soul Survivor soon after. We've both been deeply saddened to learn of the stories of abuse that have continued since that time. And that is quite a shocking revelation. Not just that they've gone through that abuse as well, but back in 2004, confronting Mike Pilavacci and then going and bringing it to the attention of the chairman of the Soul Survivor Ministries trustees and nothing being done about it. And eventually them both feeling that they had to leave Soul Survivor. And I'm sure this is coming up in the investigations that are taking place. Sadly, if they had been listened to at the time and actions had been taken, then the abuse of subsequent victims would never have happened. So not only does Matt Redman speak about his relationship with Mike Pilavacci and what went on, but also his wife, Beth. And the article goes on to say, Redman was being subjected to abusive, inappropriate and controlling behaviour. Something he has said had its roots in the relationship Pilavacci formed with him when Pilavacci was a youth worker at St Andrew's Chorley Wood Church in Hertfordshire and Redmond was just 13 years old. Redmond's father had taken his own life when he was seven years old. At that time, he met Pilavacci. He says he was being sexually abused by his stepfather, the crime the latter went to prison for, with the help of Pilavacci's intervention and guidance. This, Redmond says, resulting in his undying loyalty to the former vicar. I had a really good rapport with him. He recalls, honestly, he had a good rapport with everyone. He was a youth leader with a lot of humour and warmth. We went on a weekend away as a youth group and I was carrying a deep secret. I was actually being sexually abused. And during that weekend, I decided I would tell Mike. He helped me go to the authorities and walk through that. And you can form those deep connections with people when they're helping you in a traumatic time. Um, and, you know, Matt Redman was only 13 years old. His Dad had committed suicide when he was seven. He was being sexually abused by his stepfather. He goes to Mike Pilavacci, who's a youth leader. Um, he says here, you know, he's uh, had a lot of humour and a lot of warmth. It seemed very approachable. He told him a connection was formed because Mike Pilavacci took uh, the initiative, went to the authorities and helped him through it. But there was something more that was 
happening behind it as Matt Redman goes on. I was probably seeing him every day, I would think. And then he started to counsel me about my sexual abuse, which, looking back, I don't feel awesome about because he wasn't a trained counsellor. He'd actually been an accountant just a few years before. And, you know, I was telling the deepest, darkest things and he was asking me for the details of what happened. And the real problematic thing to me about that is that he would often wrestle me afterwards. And I'm a real loss for words. It's, you know, you're a leader, you're, you're helping someone. Yes, he overstepped the line with counselling. He wasn't a trained counsellor. Maybe, you know, he was trying to help this young kid going through this awful, terrible time. But then you don't ask for details like that of what's happening. That's actually is for a trained counsellor, a specialist to help him deal with those things. And that's even if the trained counsellor does ask for that. I, I, I could, I don't know if they would or not. But then saying, you know, Matt Remond saying the real problematic thing is that he would often wrestle me afterwards. Like, you know, this is behaviour that I, you know, you know what I mean? It's just a loss for words. Wrestling was definitely his thing. I know a lot of people who were physically wrestled by Mike and it was quite often hidden in a room in the church or it would be around his house, away from everyone. I thought maybe this is a youth leader trying to break the tension and it's what youth leaders do. Sometimes it could go on for 20 minutes. It was like full on wrestling. But obviously this is a youth leader. This is an adult. This is hidden away from everyone. Looking back, I really don't feel good about it. And especially as sometimes it happened straight after we've been talking about the details of the sexual abuse that I've suffered. Again, like, what, what, what's, this, what's this guy doing? You know, wrestling. Like, after you'd spoken about something so traumatic to, to a young person. You know, Mike Pilavachi at the time is a youth leader. He's being looked up to then as an adult. As Matt Raymond says, wrestling hidden away from everyone else in a room in a church or in his house you know this is absolutely taking advantage of young people and the situation but then matt redman and, and beth go on to speak about other behavior controlling behavior that comes out of mike pinavacci in different situations in the article it goes on to say but while they appeared best friends on soul survivor stages behind the smiles or laughs and jokes, the preacher would frequently exhibit jealous and controlling behaviours towards Redmond, making him suffer the silent treatment for months at a time, or offending or upsetting him, with something as innocuous as adding an extra song to the worship list without checking. When Redmond started dating his now wife Beth, this controlling behaviour continued. It overshadowed events that should have been happy, like our engagement and wedding, said Beth. And this is why Mike Pilavachi needs a lot of prayer. There's obviously a lot going on. He needs to seek help for what's going on. And he needs to come and, and repent and apologise to each of the victims as well. That's, you know, that's seeking their forgiveness for what he has done. Pilavachi's bullying became so intense, Beth says, that she was forced to go to her GP. I didn't feel like I was well. That was the impact it was having on me, she says. And Matt and I, we were still dating at that stage and we had gone on a date to the cinema. Mike had been calling Matt's landline and not being able to get hold of him. And then they sort of had a conversation like, where are you? I don't know where you were. And then both of us were then frozen out from that point. And then we got engaged. And that was another massive trigger. And the silent treatment went on for months and months and months, right up until the night before our wedding. He was still not speaking to us. And remember here, we're speaking about somebody who's going around the world preaching to these large audiences but at the same time as you know going to tell people about Jesus and his love and all these things and forgiveness and what would Jesus do he's not speaking uh, to one of his closest friends his, his worship leader in the time that were the, like they said the happiest time of their lives after they get engaged and coming up to their wedding it's it's quite shocking really the couple also tell of a pattern of young male interns coming to live with Pilavachi who were assigned to have the same experience victims have told the telegraph that concerns were raised about Pilavachi as early as 2002 yet nothing was done Beth claims that a senior church member was aware of the allegations but shut people down saying, you silly boys. So with the Hughes brothers saying that they confronted Pilavachi and reported it in 2004, you know, now it's saying in the article that 2002 has been reported. Abuse continues when other people are 
not taking action when it's being reported to them. And they're in those positions. People are approaching them because they're in positions of power and they should be taking action. And, and there's huge questions about why these people did not take action. And now because of that, there's many young men out there who have suffered the consequences of Mike Pilavachi's actions. These young guys will come to live with Mike and you could see the effect on their mental health, she says. But the complaint was completely shut down. It wasn't validated. It wasn't concerning. It was a maturity issue. So that was really brutal. And the last thing you want is for someone to suggest that you're causing trouble or you're being disruptive or it's on you. So it's a very shaming, confusing moment because you've got to remember we were in our 20s. And so off we all went. They left. We left. It was a really sad moment. And that's another sign when you've got these people leaving a successful ministry. Well, you would leave a successful ministry if God's calling you away. But if you've got all these people who, you know, are well known in the South, Matt Redman and the Hughes brothers, you know, leaving because of this situation, that there has, well, there should have been questions asked. Or, but they, they knew, didn't they? They didn't, they knew because Redman goes on to say that if anything was ever mentioned to someone about, in authority about Pelavach's behaviour, the phrase, that's just Mike, would be the response. You know, and to let something go is, is that's just Mike, is, is again, not acceptable. I don't know how many times I'll, I'll say this in this article. It just seems like failure after failure. Mike Pilavachi got away with this stuff for so long, it could have been stopped. But those who were there in positions of authority could have helped, didn't. There was a sense of, he's so funny, he's so gifted and talented. He's got this charismatic personality. And what you have to put up with it for that is there's going to be this mistreatment side, says Roman. Because he was this powerful leader and this brilliant communicator. And there were tens of thousands of young people around the Soul Survivor movement. I think he got away with a lot more than he would have. And that's a huge lesson for us. If you hear about abuse, you have to report it. And it doesn't matter who the person is. And this is the thing with abuse. Is if they're going to get away with stuff, they, they're going to try to do more. And if these things are being reported to those in authority and it's not being actioned on, you know, how safe is he going to feel? That's why he abused up to 150 people. The Romans say they know of many people struggling to come to terms with Pilavachi's behaviour after decades, while others have received therapy, suffered from trauma, PTSD, and a horrific spiritual fallout, included total loss of faith. And this is the other thing, you know, that there's so many young men out there who lost their faith because of Mike Pilavachi's actions as a Christian church leader, uh, you know, as I said, going out, doing these big conferences and talks. Of course, they're going to lose their faith. He's telling them one thing. They come to faith, to faith through his ministry or going to his church to be an intern. And then this happening to them. You know, where, where's Jesus in all this? You know, they would have so many questions about their faith because of this abuse. But Matt Mazarin says he hasn't lost his faith. He says, I think Jesus is an expert at bringing uh, things into the light. And I think that what's happening in this whole process, I think Jesus is doing this. I think Jesus is cleaning up his church and bringing something into the light that needed to be in the light. And what, what a statement. And, you know, the, yes, if people aren't going to take action, then Jesus will. He bring, will bring things to the light. And there will be a huge fallout. There'll be consequences, but people can get help. But... You know, the whole Soul Survivor Church movement has to now go through this time of healing and understanding and, and go through the appropriate investigations as well. But the church needs to be pure. We need to be true disciples and followers of Christ and not have abusers in our church as much as they are. Uh, we need to use these unfortunate situations that have happened to ensure that this never happens again. And the article finishes, as a result of the Telegraph investigation, more than 100 people came forward to report allegations against Pilavachi spanning 40 years. However, it is understood that this figure is now closer to 150. 40 years. 40 years and 150 young men abused. This can never, ever, ever happen again. If you are a victim of abuse and it is happening now, report it. If people do not listen, then go somewhere else. There will be links below in the description. This has to stop. This is not Christ-like. This is not what Christ came to earth to do and to bring, to let people into church, to use those, their positions 
to abuse others. This is totally unchristian. Do pray for all those who are victims of abuse. And also, you know, as Christians, we also pray for Mike Pilavachi as well. Thank you.